Hi everyone, I'm Brother Brian Shortall. I'm the uh, parish priest out here in St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Priorswood. Uh, that's quite close to Dublin Airport, just uh, for those of you who are wondering what neck of the woods it's in. And I'm also involved in Padre Pio Ministry. I'm uh, involved in the um, Capuchin uh, Initiative to, uh, I guess, you know, it bring the ministry and the mission and the spirituality of St. Padre Pio uh, to, to a wider uh, a, a group. Now, that might sound a little strange because, well, who doesn't know Padre Pio? Um, he's a saint for our time, probably one of the most well-known saints, uh, perhaps of the 20th century, the 21st century. I mean, my first encounter with Padre Pio was way back in the early 1970s when my nana, my mother's mother, uh, would have introduced me to him just by showing me pictures and saying, you know, that's a very holy saint, and showing me a picture of, of, of Padre Pio dressed in the Capuchin habit. Um, a little while after that, when I became seven or eight years of age and I got into Star Wars, I realized, hold on, he looks a little bit like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Maybe he was the real Jedi as well, I don't know, but uh, a wonderful um, little story uh, as to how I suppose I, I, it began for me, my vocation to be a Capuchin. Well, it began for Padre Pio in the year 1887 when he was born and he grew up in a little town called Pietrocina, which is, um, if you imagine Italy as the, as the, the, the boot or the, the leg, um, Pietrocina is kind of over on the west side, on the sort of the, the shin side. And he grew up there um, and grew up in a family um, and was um, particularly special in the sense that he, he was experiencing very powerful um, um, prayer moments uh, with, with the good Lord. And he didn't realize that he was uh, not sharing that uh, particular uh, experience with others. He thought that everybody did. But it, 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 it meant for him that maybe the Lord was setting him apart to be someone who was going to do a special work or have a special relationship with, with, with God. He was uh, called and felt really attracted to the, the Franciscan way of life because uh, he was quite also captivated by St. Francis of Assisi. Interesting how, you know, even at that stage, he was given the name Francesco or Francis by his mom, by his dad. And, you know, he was going to emerge to follow the little poor man, Francis of Assisi, into the Capuchin Franciscan way of life. And also to follow Francis into uh, a way of life that was very radical and very poor and very powerfully um, gospel oriented. What does that mean? To love one another, to be close to the people and especially to be very sensitive to the poor, but to be very powerfully um, a witness to the love of Jesus Christ for everybody and particularly for the poor. Uh, he joined the Capuchins and was given the name Brother Pio or Pius. Um, probably because uh, that genre or genre of popes was was in uh, was in the Vatican, Pius the Tenth, Pius the Eleventh, and you know probably uh, given the name of the reigning pope was something that was very very uh, very profound. Um, he was professed and he was ordained a priest in a place called Benevento in the Cathedral of Benevento in, in 1910. And it was then that he started to find, um, even though he was a big man and a stocky man, he was actually five foot 11. He actually found, you know, he wasn't experiencing the best of health. In fact, he struggled a lot with his health, his breathing, his energy. And he noticed uh, in 1911 and 1912, uh, very great pains in his hands and in his feet and inside. Now, he did identify, like Francis of Assisi, with the sufferings of Jesus. So it, he didn't bat an eyelid when he was advised by his spiritual director, by uh, his, um, his kind of counselor and spiritual director, that, that this could be something that would be um, maybe um, a symbol of his commitment to being a, a, a witness to the, to the sufferings and the passion of Christ. 
The game changer happened in 1918 uh, when he was praying beef under the uh, cross uh, in the choir of um, uh, the Friary of San Giovanni. Now, he had just arrived to the Friary of San Giovanni because for the first few years of his priesthood, he actually lived in Pietrelcina, in the hometown where he grew up. San Giovanni, if you go across in a straight line to the other side, to the eastern side, to the heel of Italy, it's just in the mountains there. San Giovanni was where he spent all of his life after that, from 1918 right up to when he died in 1968. He was praying and he, he noticed a great peace came over him. Uh, but while that peace came over him, he also noticed an intense experience of the passion of Jesus, knowing about the sufferings of Jesus and becoming very moved by the sufferings. Some of the friars who were close to him noticed that his hands were bleeding, his feet were bleeding. And this, when he realized what had happened, horrified him, moved him to tears and frightened him. He prayed for a long time after that, 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 that the visible wounds would go away, but it wasn't to be. Even though he begged God to keep the physical pain, the excruciating pain, um, he knew that this pain would be more than excruciating. It would be now horrific. Why? Because now he was an object of curiosity. Now he couldn't hide. One of the things he always said when asked by the brothers, what, what are you, Pio? Who are you? I just want to be a poor friar who prays. That's all he ever wanted to be. And to do that with, uh, with as little volume as possible, as little attention as possible. He suffered a lot, especially in the 30s and 40s, when because of the spiritual phenomena that were associated with him, uh, the, the Holy See had to uh, investigate and, and uh, they usually investigate slowly. Um, so he was asked to not say public mass or, or have public ministry or hear confessions for quite a long few years. But he took it in a sense on the chin and, and, and you know, what kept faith with the superiors in, of the order in Rome and kept faith with the, his guardian in, 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 in San Giovanni and kept faith with the, the church authorities and the, and the Holy See. And when he was restored to public ministry uh, in, the, in, the, in the end of the 40s and all through the 50s, um, it began a real symphony of suffering, a real powerhouse of service to the people, particularly in the area of the internal forum, in the area of what we call the confessional. He, he heard many confessions every day and was very much at the service of people who were troubled in spirit and uh, people who were particularly uh, troubled by suffering. He was so sensitive to people's sufferings that he spearheaded um, the uh, project which became the home for the relief of the suffering. Uh, the, the great hospital that's there beside the friary in San Giovanni, a really powerful witness to Padre Pio's sensitivity to the sufferings of people and especially broken people. Like people are poor and we're poor in that part of the world, of course, but people were also poor in spirit and poor in, in, in health. And he wanted to, to sort of make a difference there. So the, the, the hospital was open in the, at the start of the 1950s. And to this day, it's a center of excellence, particularly for, for cancer and um, uh, for research and for pediatrics, actually. There's a huge pediatric wing that has been recently built. And Pope Francis, when he visited there on St. Patrick's Day 2018, uh, visited and blessed the, 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 the great work that was, that was there. Padre Pio, um, it wouldn't be fair to, to speak about you know, the supernatural phenomena alone, the great ability he had to read souls, the, the ability to, to be in prayer and to be elsewhere in, 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 in a prayer space and to be able to comfort people even overseas. Um, it, but I, I think it, it wouldn't be fair to talk about that alone. I think it's also important to talk about Padre Pio as a brother, as a brother among the community in, in, in the Friars. Um, you know, someone who, who, who prayed with the brothers, morning prayer and, and, the, and the, the liturgy of the hours, midday prayer, evening prayer, ate with the brothers, recreated with the brothers as much as possible, uh, and was, was also at the service of, of, of the community of friars that were there. But we know he was never a guardian of the community, but he was, uh, I think, for some periods of time, second counsellor. So, you know, he was able to be assistant to, to, to the, the, the community uh, at, at that level as well. Um, he was someone who also um, was at the service of the church. I mean, uh, certainly prelates and uh, senior clerics would have come to San Giovanni for, for, for solace and for uh, support and for, uh, you know, uh, uh, counsel. 
Um, towards the end of his life, um, the pains from time to time, like the tide came in and out, uh, got pretty bad and, you know, his health broke down. Uh, but he still persevered and he still was able to uh, rise very early and anticipate his morning mass, which more and more people came to. Um, he was also someone who, uh, you know, again, with the, the great gift of pain that he suffered, he was also someone who was able to, again, give consolation to people who were, who were, who were, who were suffering. One great story I know uh, very briefly is the story that Brother Peter Dempsey would have told us, one of our Capuchins who has now gone to God, who was um, a student of theology in Rome during the war years, when many students couldn't return home because of the war, they, they went in the summer months to, to the different friaries, and Peter went to San Giovanni and found himself sitting beside Padre Pio. And he told me, you know, because you'd say, look, what was he like? What was he, what did he say? What, 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 what made him tick? Well, he said, Padre Pio came across to me as a very normal man, a very, saintly man a very prayerful man who 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 recounted to to peter that you know that every day he prayed for especially missionaries and capuchin missionaries and and also prayed for the irish capuchin missionaries and we have missions in today in south africa in zambia and in south korea and he also said that he prayed very much for the church in ireland so you know he knew that he had spiritual children to uh, pray for uh, you know all over the world but particularly in ireland so peter told me that he also said he would, he'd never he never made the evening meal. He was always praying in his room uh, for the at the evening meal time. And the brothers would have said that he, while he was there, he was praying for people having had visits from their guardian angels. And one of the great sayings of Padre Pio was, "Send me your guardian angel." He had great devotion to the guardian angel. So if you can't go to San Giovanni and if you can't find maybe a, a way to to kind of visit maybe the sanctuary our little shrine in church street if you're elsewhere send padre pio guardian angel just say you know dear guardian angel would you please ask padre pio to pray to the good lord for me and he will if you want to become a spiritual child of padre pio it's very simple there's no contract there's no signing anything you just say padre pio will you accept me as your spiritual child and he says i accept you but don't make me lose face but we, you know we do our best to try and to try and live good lives and to be you know, so uh, people who will, will try to follow because Padre Pio, remember this, always points away from himself and always points to Jesus because the number one in the, in the life of St. Padre Pio is Jesus Christ and the fact that he suffered so much for all of us. So that's just a little bit about uh, Padre Pio, uh, our, 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 a little bit about our, probably our, our probably most famous saint, I would hazard a guess, Padre Pio, a little bit about his life. He died late on the night of the 22nd of October, 1968, and his beatification, his cause for beatification opened very soon after that, and he was beatified in 1999 by St. John Paul II, who he met years before, and canonized in June 2002. And next year, please God, will be, 2022 will be the 20th anniversary of the, uh, the um, uh, canonization of Padre Pio www.padrepio.ie for more information about him and what's going on and what's happening and what we're hoping to do, especially as we emerge from the pandemic. www.padrepio.ie. Don't forget www.capuchinfranciscans.ie for all info about the Capuchins. And always remember, Padre Pio would also ask you to pray that others will come to join our family as Capuchins. We're always on the lookout for open hearted men to join our family you would always be very welcome and I know brother Richard would be interested in talking to you as well about uh, what it might be like to be a Capuchin friar thank you all so much and maybe we'll go before we go a blessing with the mitten of Padre Pio now it's it's a bit shiny because it's behind glass but we just pray oh God you gave Saint Pio of Pietrocina Capuchin priest the great privilege of participating in a unique way in the passion of your son with confidence we ask you to grant us all the special grace which we ardently desire and above all grant us the grace of living in conformity with the death of Jesus to arrive at the glory of the resurrection in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. May the Lord give you his peace. <laughs>